All right, we might get started then. Um, so thanks everyone for joining us tonight uh, for the latest Paddles Up session. Uh, today, we're lucky to be joined by Russell and his team from Good Sports, and they're going to be taking us through the Good Sports platform. And then maybe if we have time for it, Russell, we might do a bit of Q&A in the end, if that's okay. Um, yeah. yeah, so maybe if everyone just, if you do have any questions as you go along, as Russell's talking, maybe just pop them in the chat, then we can loop back around to them later. Um, all right, so that's enough from me, and I'll hand it over from uh, Russell from Good Sports. Thanks, Russell. Thanks, Ramsey. Um, so uh, thank you, everyone, for, for having us along for your meeting this evening. Um, I've, uh, well, just a quick background for myself. Uh, I'm the New South Wales ACT uh, Regional Community Development Manager for the ADF, so the Alcohol and Drug Foundation, um, which is the organisation that, uh, that runs Good Sports. Um, along with me tonight, we have two of our senior community development officers um, supporting different parts of New South Wales. So we, we have uh, Riley Sawyer, uh, who's based on the Central Coast and, uh, and supports part of New South Wales and into Hunter, New England, uh, and has been doing some work in Western New South Wales as well. Uh, and Andrew Prentice, uh, another um, senior community development officer who's based in Sydney and works uh, predominantly with... Uh, um, or with clubs in Sydney and, and uh, also um, uh, we're with a lot of our football clubs down here too. So um, between the three of us, we'll be keen to support you with an, and answer any of your questions along the way. Um, please feel free, throw them in the chat. And as Ramsey said, we'll be able to, to come back around to them and uh, uh, certainly answer them as we go. And I, I hope also that we can... Um, uh, get to a point where we, we we actually take you through the portal and give you a chance to to uh, register online while we're in the chat and uh, um, take you through that process and make it nice and easy for you. So we, we've got four different things we want to take you through and uh, basically what is good sports, give you a bit of an outline of that, um, how it works uh, and just explain the different components to it and uh, and the background behind it. Uh, also give you a bit of a taste of our Good Sports Mental Health uh, module, which um, one of the, the elements to our program is uh, some learning modules that will help embed some of the, the ideas, the, the practices, the, the thoughts and approaches that, you, that we go through with Good Sports right across the, all of the members within your club. It's a, it's a really good way that you can have an impact and, uh, have, and provide the support to your members. Um, and it's a great tool for us so that we're getting beyond just one or two people who might know about good sports and really support the, um, a far greater reach of, of uh, sporting members across the, the state. And the fourth thing is just to uh, give you that taster of what good sports is and help you uh, jump into our portal and, and get your club uh, started with the good sports program. So what is good sports? Uh, Good Sports is, as I mentioned, a program of the Alcohol and Drug Foundation. Uh, the ADF has been around since 1959. Um, it's, uh, I suppose it's, it started with uh, Sir Edmund Weary Dunlop uh, as a return serviceman um, and having uh, needing to support return servicemen with their issues uh, around drugs and alcohol. Um, and essentially that's where we kicked it off. Uh, our main focus is, is really trying to prevent and minimise the harms caused by alcohol and other drugs. And we understand that working with uh, and building strong and connected communities is, is a really good way to prevent those harms. Um, and that's where sporting clubs is one of the big hubs of communities, particularly in regional areas, but certainly right across um, New South Wales and Australia. And our vision is lives unlimited by alcohol and other drugs. What is Good Sports? It's the largest and longest running health initiative in community sport in Australia. We're aimed at uh, creating healthier and more family friendly environments with a real focus on targeting uh, the reduction of risky drinking practices in sporting clubs. And the way we've designed the program is to try and make it as easy as possible for you as volunteers uh, to be able to uh, navigate and gain the benefits of the program in, in a way that can be done at your own pace um, and with all of the support that you need. 
Now, the program is uh, essentially covers over four areas. And uh, the first one is really around the, the alcohol and tobacco management. So helping clubs um, not only meet their, their legal requirements around those components, but um, also in, in with some ideas around practices and policies that can really help prevent um, the challenges and, and uh, harms that could be associated with it. Uh, it really allows you to then be smart around the way that you approach alcohol and tobacco within your sporting club. It also looks at addressing those particular components with, in supporting uh, junior members within clubs. So there, there's elements there and advice on how to uh, approach those with particular strategies. We look at illegal drugs or illicit drugs is another term for it. And, uh, and ha how can clubs prepare to, one, prevent um, uh, illegal drugs becoming an issue or any events that might occur within your club? Or if they do, how can you uh, uh, address them in a, um, a respectful and um, structured uh, manner that's good for not only the club and your, your club's reputation, but for the people involved? The last component, which is a new one to, to our Good Sports uh, program, is we've spent quite a bit of time in a number of years in, in how can we embed mental health um, strategies and practices into our Good Sports program. And the reason for that is we know that uh, there are links with, with uh, uh, mental health and um, the implications around alcohol and illegal drugs. So it's a really good uh, addition to our program that we're really, uh, really excited about. And the benefits of, of good sports, um, and this is coming from clubs, not just us, is that it helps make clubs more family friendly. Uh, people become more aware of their behaviour, so they're more conscious and, and um, respond accordingly and, and, and are more thoughtful with, with others. They... Um, find that it helps assist them with their legal compliance, whether it be um, smoke-free environments in line with New South Wales health legislation. Uh, it might be uh, around legal compliance for functions and events, um, but also for those that do sell alcohol, there's guidance around uh, the practices uh, required for selling alcohol. It helps give clubs a, a better profile when, it, when they're applying for grants. So it's just knowing that you've got those, uh, those practices in place. While um, Dragon Boats might not necessarily have ground hire agreements with council um, uh, being on the water, um, it's certainly uh, we, with some clubs, we, we find that it actually helps with their uh, relationship with council, that they're actually... Um, uh, many councils have a, a ground well, have good sports accreditation as a requirement for their ground hire agreements, and that's where it's really important for us to to work with our councils um, to to ensure that we're supporting uh, all of the clubs with with the program. And lastly, it encourages new members to join the club, and the main reason for this is that, again, going back to that first one, a family friendly environment where everyone's respectful of each other. People are aware of their behaviour and how it might impact others. That creates a really positive environment that wants um, that really attracts people to want to be a part of it. And it's the sort of thing that you can really promote um, and know that if you're a good sports club and you you promote a really family friendly environment, that people are going to want to be a part of your club. So that's a bit about why, but to go with why, uh, sorry. That's a bit about what, but to go with the what, we need to understand the why and um, the relevance to, uh, to good sports right across the country. So every year in Australia, five and a half thousand people die from alcohol-related injuries. Um, another 157,000 are hospitalised uh, and the cost to the community for alcohol-related harms is, is over 15 billion. Add in illegal drugs and that, that's another... Um, more than $8 billion, that it, it actually costs the community um, in terms of uh, treatment, et cetera. So if we can look to work through, say, good sports, for example, where community sporting clubs have the ability to make, uh, to prevent those costs, but also providing an atmosphere where we're going to minimise those harms. So it's just about trying to take an approach that, uh, 
Um, it doesn't say alcohol doesn't exist or we're, we're anti-alcohol or anything like that, but it's about managing alcohol responsibly so that we prevent the harms associated with it. Now, if we go that one step further around the why, so that's the, that's the dollar value and that's what um, governments and, and, and other organisations want to hear. But here's some of the real life stories that uh, are reasons why it's important for your club to manage alcohol and illegal drugs and smoking and all of those other aspects around um, good sports and manage them appropriately. Um, many people have been touched, whether it be through drink driving or just foolish behaviour, um, just associated with alcohol. Um, and and it, it, it really touches each and individual community if you look at some of these, these cases that, that we're showing. Um, so it's, it does become really important to, to think through um, why good sports can actually um, benefit your club. So th this is just one example. And, and th this, these two clubs uh, are actually now part of good sports and, and it's been essentially a part um, uh, due to some of the circumstances uh, of losing a, uh, a club member, unfortunately. And um, the sad thing is, uh, this is not a one-off as well. Um, so we, we want to work with sporting clubs to help prevent um, uh, instances like this where, unfortunately, um, uh, some of our, our, our loved ones and, and, and club members in various sporting clubs might, might not be with us. But all of this can be preventable with good, smart, safe practices that are really simple to uh, uh, to introduce the clubs, which really don't impact things too much uh, and allow you to really enjoy the sport for what it is and putting sport as number one. So again, taking that, that a little bit further, the origins of good sports. Um, we've been running as a, a program since the year 2000. Um, we go back to 95 and to, through to 97. There was a lot of uh, research um, coming through around the increase in alcohol-related incidents in Victoria in particular, um, but then across New South Wales and other states. And in 1999, we conducted some research on uh, the role alcohol played in sporting clubs. And that went as far as to look at um, what were some of the instances and, and things that needed to be addressed. And that research found there were four significant factors, um, which were high levels of binge drinking, underage drinking, drink driving and unlicensed alcohol sales. So all putting um, added risk to the, the members of those particular sporting clubs. So Good Sports was then devised to, to create a, um, an accreditation program that would help clubs uh, minimize the harms while uh, managing alcohol responsibly and allowing it to fulfill a place in their club uh, so not completely eliminating it, but having a place within their club, but in a responsible place that's managed um, uh, clearly, professionally, and simply in a way that is going to be really positive for the rest of the club. And along the way, we've been able to conduct a couple of, uh, or we've been able to conduct some research, um, and not only just us, but external organisations to provide some independent research around how well the program is, is progressing and is it doing what we expected or what we were, were aiming to achieve. And what we found is there's a 42% decrease in alcohol-related incidents and a 37% decrease in risky drinking. Um, so that is really exciting that... Um, it's, it's really playing a part in making those, those sporting clubs a safer environment, but still a really enjoyable one where sport is really the focus. So is there any questions on that bit so far around what is good sports? Uh, nothing so far. Fantastic. Okay, so moving on to, to the next bit, how, how does good sports work? As I mentioned, it was an accreditation program where we uh, originally had in recent years uh, or in previous years uh, had a three level accreditation program where you gradually progressed through. And you had to accumulate a, and introduce a number of strategies and practices um, at each particular level before you could pr progress. Uh, what we've done since then in, in, in 2021, we've uh, 
used an innovative approach to, to provide an integrated model where not only are we addressing um, alcohol, smoking, illegal drugs, we've now introduced mental health, but we've rolled it all into one so clubs can progress at your pace. Um, you can do the things that you're, you're ready to do now and you can wait till later on to address the other areas that, um, that you're not quite ready to or you, you might not have the time to at this point in time. But your progress continues at, at whichever rate you want it to, to uh, progress at. So I'm going to just show you a little bit around how it all comes together and how we work. So if you, you think of uh, the program itself, I said there's an accreditation program. Um, it, it is now where you work towards building an accreditation. And then when you get all the way through, you, you generate a gold accreditation. Um, and uh, that then is aligned to a policy that you uh, are able to then share with your members so that it really gives them some direction around the engagement with good sports and the strategies that they can abide by that really make your club a really strong, safe, family-friendly one. Beyond that accreditation program, we've got an online portal. We've got some great staff, of which a couple are here tonight. Uh, we have a website full of resources that uh, are able to help you uh, through the program. And then we've got learning modules which can really embed some of the, this knowledge and these ideas and practices with all of your members in your club and help make it a really safe place for, you, for, for them to enjoy dragon boat racing um, and overall have a really great environment for sport. So I'll take you through each of these really quickly. So the online portal, this is what it sort of looks like when you go in there. Uh, we, we base the, the approach on having a, a, a questionnaire for you uh, around what are your current practices uh, that within your club when it comes to alcohol, uh, smoking, illegal drugs, um, junior participation and mental health. Uh, and the number of questions will vary. The, the most you'll have is 53 questions. Uh, they're really easy. It's just a yes, no, or, um, uh, uh, or or you can essentially skip it and come back to it later. Um, so it's a really easy process. From there, if you've if you've answered yes, that can help pop populate a, a policy for you. Uh, but if you, if there's uh, an element there that you've answered no and that you you need to look at addressing, um, it goes across to your action plan. And uh, for, for you to continue to grow and, and work through the program itself, you then go and address each of those action plans. And we have a guide with information for each of those action plans on how you can address it. And there are resources as, a, attached to it within the portal itself. Once you've gone through some of those, you'll be notified when you, you've done enough to actually get that first accreditation. It'll actually pop up in the portal for you. And uh, then you get to sign a policy. So all you need to do there is that in the past, the good old days, we used to have to get hand, hand signatures um, and uh, have things either faxed back or posted back. Um, Brave new world. Uh, now we can do things all online. Uh, you, you can sign the policy online uh, and have another committee member or another club member sign the policy as well. So it's, uh, it then is captured within the portal for you in the future. You can then update that policy uh, each year, but you can update it as you progress through more and more questions um, and more things in your action plan and ultimately working towards that goal of accreditation. So it's a really simple approach. Do your questionnaire, look at your actions that you need to address within your club. And then once you've addressed those, uh, you then uh, can then sign the policy and you communicate that with your, your members within your club. So the policy, as I said, sort of captures all of those five components. We have some great staff that uh, really go out of their way to support you. So um, not only well, we, we have a great portal that's re really easy to use and allows you to progress through in your own, at your own pace, in your own time, um, if you do have questions, you'll be able to reach out to your staff or to our staff, and they'll be able to support you with um, uh, any questions on how the program works or to guide you through the action plan that your club has. 
Um, I think uh, that's one of the real strong suits of the program that, yes, we have a great portal, but we have great staff with really good knowledge around alcohol and other drugs and how, um, how you can implement some strategies that uh, allow that to be managed appropriately. Alongside that, the website and uh, the various resources associated with it uh, are fantastic. Um, so we have things that basically cover off on, on everything from uh, guides to safe transport and tips on, on what to try and embed into your uh, functions and events just to ensure that there's something planned so that um, uh, drink driving doesn't become a, an issue for, for any of your members. We've got tips on club fundraising. Um, so some suggestions there within our resources on uh, things that might not include alcohol. So sort of moving away from uh, raffle tickets for, for a case of beer or, uh, or things like that. But what other things can you organise that will lead to uh, fundraising that's in a really uh, strong family friendly approach? And then we've also got things like safe celebrations guides. So how, how can you plan your, your presentations or your, your trips away or things like that so that you minimise that risk of, of uh, alcohol or any other uh, drugs or, smoke or, or, or smoking becoming an issue that might uh, affect any of your members? So it's really good tools there that you can access. And as I said, when you go through the action plan and you've got something that's identified that you need to work on, you'll actually be able to link directly to uh, some guides and some resources that will support you on that. And then taking it a step further, as I mentioned earlier, we've got some three great learning modules at the moment. So one for alcohol awareness, one for tackling illegal drugs, and the, and the third one, the new one, is the, the module about um, mental health. And I'm going to show you a, a little bit of the introduction to that one in just a moment. So that's how Good Sports works. Is there any questions at this point around Good Sports? Um, nothing that came through at the moment, but I did have my own question, Russell, if that was okay. I might Please, be, definitely. You might be able to cover this a bit later, but um, I was just thinking I've had myself some minor experience at the club a few years ago, which had issues with alcohol and mental health and, and some of their members. Um, and I found that it ended up leading to a bit of a social separation between people in the club and, and the people that were affected by those. Does Good Sports have any kind of resources or uh, material that might be able to address address that issue? Yeah, definitely. And, and the great thing is um, not only with, through Good Sports, but through our other resources at the Alcohol and Drug Foundation, um, there's support and guide, uh, guidance and, and uh, uh, tools that, that uh, clubs can certainly access and we'll give them direction ar around addressing some of those scenarios. So, so the sort of thing that you're, you're referring to there a little bit is um, stigma. So the stigma associated with um, misuse of alcohol or other drugs and, and how people are perceived and how we can try and uh, appreciate and understand that. And some of these modules actually give some guidance around that. Um, so I think that's a really, those are some really important tools. The other aspect uh, that's a really simple one for, for uh, clubs to embed is that as you work through the, uh, the Good Sports program and you generate a, a policy that, so we, we've essentially put the policy together for you. Once you answer your questions and you, you've addressed your action items, the policy is created and that provides you with some guidance and direction and some structure on how to manage some of those scenarios. Um, so if you're ever unsure of how to approach it, the policy is going to give you some really clear steps on, on how you expect to manage it. But it's also uh, thinking of stigma. It's the perception of, of how um, people will be viewed in those circumstances. And, and we really encourage that people uh, or clubs think of uh, those affected as people and address it as, a, as an issue supporting those people to uh, um, minimise the harm that's associated with, the, with alcohol and other drugs. So hopefully that's answered your question, Randy. Yep, no, that's great. Thank you. Okay. So now I'll just go in really quickly into um, 
our mental health module. I, I'm only going to show a, a couple of little snippets um, and, and a few little things that are associated with it, but um, we'll be able to share all of the, um, the links to the modules and essentially they're available to all good sports clubs. So um, uh, you'll get that and you'll be able to access all the other tools if when your club jumps on in, um, but certainly we'll, we'll give you a quick snapshot. So it's really avail it's, it's available at this particular link. So goodsports.com.au forward slash mental dash health dash learning. Um, and it takes about 40 minutes to, to work through. Um, and we'd really encourage you to, to share it with all of your members. Uh, it, it's a great thing for, for them to understand the challenges that others might be going through as well and how, to, uh, how that they can support each other. There's no doubt the, uh, the last six months or so, or if we go back even further, the last 18 months with, with COVID, that the challenges for all of us being cooped up inside and um, being kept away from our, our friends and family, that um, there have been challenges that, that really impact mental health. And um, this particular uh, module is great timing for it in, in terms of what, how it can support people. But within that, I'm going to show you a couple of things that um, uh, that you can you can use that again are in in the portal, but that you can utilise to be able to uh, support your members. So think about promoting that help seeking for people who might might be finding it a little bit tough. And clubs can can support members um, help mental health and and promote uh, the, the help seeking behaviours through social media. We've got a number of tools available that. Um, that you, you'll be able to access that you can share that really encourage that. Um, promote general mental health questions. So using our social media tiles, um, share help seeking messages from other, other organizations. So look out for things like from Beyond Blue and things like that, that you can share. Um, you can su provide um, support service contact information um, as well and be a, maybe post that on, on club notice boards. Uh, and encourage your members to reach out to specific members or each other if they're feeling isolated. So that really comes back to that scenario, Ramsey, you were talking about st the stigma associated with it, that as clubs, you want to provide that environment that makes people feel comfortable to come to someone to, to say, hey, I've got a problem and I need some help. Um, and that's what really strong sporting clubs do. They, they provide that atmosphere where everyone's connected, everyone feels like they can reach out when they need someone. So here's some examples of pure, uh, purely mental health focused resources that we have. So as I said, some, uh, some social media tiles that you can share. Um, there's a, a tool over here about um, supporting mental health conversations. So it gives you a bit of a guide and this could be a great thing that you could have with um, all of your committee members, just having a bit of an idea of how to approach uh, these sorts of tough conversations. Um, and, and then other resources there as well that, that really support them. And then when, we, when you think about um, uh, being able to support those people who, who are challenged by the, the potential stigma or, 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 or the discomfort that they might be feeling and if, finding it hard to have a uh, to talk about what what they're going through here's some ideas of how you can look to to approach those particular scenarios but look to try and be available and interested so set up that that opportunity for people to to know who they can go to to talk to if they have a challenge around um, their, their own mental health or um if it might be associated with the stigma related to alcohol and other, other drugs. Become a talented listener. This is one of the really hard, hard things for, for all of us, but um, it, it's such a great tool in every aspect of life. Um, being able to, to listen to people and really hear what they're trying to say and, and respect what they have to say um, for that is how they're feeling. Um, to, uh, it's a great thing to have and people really appreciate that that aspect of um, how it, it, it supports them. Be prepared to talk about how you feel about the scenario so that they, they feel like um, people are connected, uh, that they're, they're, um, they're, that things are real and they're, they're linked to someone and they're associated with it. 
check in with people often. Um, so uh, I, I think it, sometimes we, we can be stretched and, and, and find it hard, but when we, we check in with people, we reach out to them, uh, people uh, tend to feel much more connected. And you don't have to have the answer. So don't, don't feel like um, uh, you, you have to know it all. Uh, but as I, as I showed you before, there's um, a guide there on how you can have some of those tough conversations that can help people who are in, in, in having some tough times. Um, and, and there's some really good ideas there on how you can approach it. So here's some ideas for how you can connect with people online. Um, I know we're coming out of lockdown, which is absolutely fantastic, but people are still finding it's 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 a it has been a really challenging period, and, and there's no doubt that it's, it's almost been a, a little bit of uh, people going through loss and grieving and, and that sort of thing in in their own sort of way by uh, by being isolated. So. Um, while we're still sort of coming out of that and getting back into the swing of things, things like sharing um, video coaching drills or, or fun video clips and messages, have online challenges, um, polls and questions for members, uh, share member profiles. And, and it, even these sorts of things like sharing member profiles or, or get to know me posts, those are great things to really pump up someone's um, uh self-worth um, just by being able to have their, uh, them shared in a positive light in front of their peers. Have online tournaments uh, and look back at the club's history. Um, and then those video catch-ups, sort of trivia nights, team dinners, et cetera. Uh, those are some really good ways to connect online um, as we gradually come out of, out of lockdown. But these are still great things to do um, once we're, we're out of lockdown. So if we find ways to, to just chip away and, and, and whereas we might have done something like this every second or third day, and, and I know there's some clubs that will have like a, uh, a technique Tuesday, they'll have a um, be a Thursday and they'll have like three or four different things scheduled across a week. It might be that you schedule one social media thing a week uh, and that that in its own way can be a really good thing just to stay connected and, and show that you're valuing and, and looking out for your members. And then overall, it's really important to remember to look after yourself. Uh, it, it, it's often the thing that we forget and particularly knowing that you're all volunteers in many ways that um, there, there's so much required of sporting clubs these days uh, above and beyond just getting out there and participating. Um, so these sorts of things do become important that you do look after yourself, stay informed, um, but don't be obsessed about it. Stay connected and remember that um, physical distancing doesn't need um, social disconnection. So it's that way to, to make sure that you stay connected to people for your own sake and not just to, to be there to support others, but so that you, you are feeling good about yourself. Focus on what you can control, help others in, in many ways. We, we really gain a lot ourselves out of helping others um, and always um, allow yourself the time to acknowledge your feelings. So some really key messages there. So if I go back for one moment, so that's a snapshot of some of the things that we have um, within our, our module. And if you think of that there as being around mental health, and some great um, tools there and ideas. We, we have similar things there in our alcohol, alcohol um, learning module uh, and similar with the, the tackling illegal drugs one. So um, as good sports clubs, we'd love to have you um, accessing those and having all your members benefit from them. Um, I see there's a... Um, a message there from Belinda. Um, you do a quarterly newsletter and include a member profile each time. It be, uh, it's been so great to bring everyone together. I found it uh, amazing that people may have been members for many years, but they, they didn't really know much about each other. I think that's fantastic. Um, just being able to, to see someone that might've been there for um, 10, 20 years, um, that 
just trying to understand their background and how they got into the sport and, uh, and things. Uh, it, it does really just add a new um, um, uh, sort of lens, I, I think, to the club and, and, and gives a different perspective. So uh, it's really good. Russell, Is there any... Russell, it's Tony here. I just got a quick question yes, for you. Um, these modules, um, especially around mental health, I think are extremely important and, and something I encourage all clubs to embrace. If clubs are looking to go, I guess, beyond that module and um, have some more formal training within their clubs, um, all clubs have our member protection officer, um, and it's normally that person who's um, dealing with issues or challenges within the club. Do you have any more formal trainings or could recommend um, other avenues that members could take to, to sort of upskill themselves in that area? Yeah, there's one that... Uh, uh, and I know our, our team have done it as well, uh, uh, completed the, the training, it's mental health first aid. And there's a range of different providers that, that conduct that course. Um, it, it ranges in, in the length of time, but generally it's only a, a few hours. Um, but it's a really excuse me, helpful way for people to, to appreciate and, um, the stigma associated with it and how they can look to... Um, uh, support people in that that first instance. Um, I'd also then uh, look to have that that information of some of those other organisations like Beyond Blue and things like that that you can refer people to to have some of the uh, if they feel that they they need some additional support. So I hope that's answered the question, Tony. That's great. Thank you for that. And maybe um, we can pass it on. Yep. No problem. Tony, uh, it's all, there's also an opportunity that you might be able to link in with your local health district mental health as well, um, mental health department, and get them to uh, possibly come out and, and talk to club members as well. That's a really Thank good one, Thanks. All right, um, I'm going to, um, oh, sorry, Beth and Bill, um, we used to do a member profile in the weekly local paper. Should start that up again, yeah, that sounds great. Okay, um, so moving right along, getting your club up to date with good sports. Um, so I sent out an email a little bit earlier this afternoon, just with a couple of links for you. Um, one, one to our website, but. Uh, but the second one was uh, to our portal to help you get started. And, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to run you through the process and you can uh, you can go through it with me at the same time. I, I have a couple of slides which I sort of take you through the steps. I might walk through that really quickly and then come back and actually step you through the process. So um, this is the portal here. Um, so uh, HE https um, uh, portal.goodsports.com.au slash app. Um, so Riley, uh, you might be able to just whack that in the chat for me as well, and then people can access that one. Um, but as I mentioned, we've got a bit of a new look now. We, we go through that, that um, the, the portal to, uh, to sign on in and to sign up. So that's the first step. So jump onto the link. Then from there, um, we create an account, so it's a pretty simple one. Um, just your details, your mobile number, uh, and a password, and you create it and you sign up. You then get a, uh, a verification email, and this is um, well, it's an additional step, and you have to jump into your emails. Um, it just means uh, that your club information is secure. You've got the right person there, um, and then we also have um, another step there that once one person is in. You can have multiple members within a club jump on in, but that first person um, gets to confirm that that person is part of the club as well. So that way, one, you've got, you can spread the load, more people are involved and understand your, your good sports um, uh, uh, accreditation and process. Uh, but two, you can manage it so that you've got the right people um, jumping on in and doing it. And then after you've done that, you verify it and you add your club. And then after that, you're in. So I'm going to walk you through it. So it's a really simple process. So 
I'm just jumping back. So if you like, and it'd be great for, for, for some of you to have a go at this and, and jump on in, uh, go into that you can either go into the link for the portal that, that Riley shared, or if you go to our website, goodsports.com.au, and then over here on the right-hand side, there's a join now. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of time just to, to uh, uh, get yourselves set up so that you can do that, and you can walk your way through it. And please feel free to jump in if you have a question, if I'm going too fast. Um, or if you need any help along the way. So from goodsports.com.au, click join now. And then we just scroll to this sign up now because it just gives you a little bit of information there. And that takes you through. So I'd ask you to, to pre-populate a few things and I've actually, here's one I prepared earlier. And um, essentially you just need to give your name, an email address, a mobile number. Please whack in your state and then um, create a password that, that you know. So that the whole idea is to make it easy for you to access um, whenever you feel that you need to. And there's just a couple of little tick boxes there. And then we click sign up. Does anyone need any help at the moment? Okay, I'm not sure how I get rid of this off the, the top up here. There we go. Um, so um, I'm just going to uh, click on through. And you'll see that it says, uh, thanks for signing up. Uh, please check your email and click activate account in the message we sent to, and that was the, the email I've got there. So I've got my Gmail open up, up here at the moment. Um, here we go. So we've got the new one that's just Come on through. Oh, here we go. So it will look like this. And it just gives a little picture with some information there. And all you do is just click here to confirm your email address. And it takes you in. So it then asks you to find your club because your club may already be in there. Um, so it's a good chance just to type in and see if, if it already exists. So I'm gonna call uh, my club is Grimson Dragon Boat Club. So it's showing up, it's gone through there and there, there's none there. I'm gonna add a club. So the official club name, Grimson Dragon Boat. Um, yes, I want to enter the competition. The great thing is right now um, we have a competition for new clubs to come on in where there's um, uh, six chances to win $500 for, for clubs. Great thing about that is um, we understand it's been really challenging times with, without, with no competition, so no membership fees, struggling to get sponsorship and so forth. Um, we know clubs are, have been doing it tough. So this is just a, a little competition that might help. Um, you add in your sport. So you start typing it in. And we've got Dragon Boats in there. Um, you add your league and association. So we'll just say um, Dragon Boat New South Wales. 
And then we need you to put in um, your uh, nearest street address to where you compete. Um, so we can't put exactly where you compete because you're competing on the water. So um, yeah, if you can put your street address nearest to, to where you, you're competing, that will, um, will capture it. So. So once you start typing it in, it'll come up um, within the system. Okay, so you can see how it's, it's populated throughout the thing. Postcode, select your state. And then you add your, in your, uh, your position. This little section down here with these little que few questions here, it actually um, helps define the questions that you'll be asked. So um, as I said earlier, the number of questions will differ depending on um, the type the, or the situation your club has with regards to alcohol. So if you, excuse me, if you currently sell alcohol, you'll actually have more questions um, than a club that doesn't sell alcohol. Um, and, and we really tailor those questions to address that. So I'm gonna say, yes, we sell alcohol. Um, so that means a club alcohol free. Well, you've got these little things here that just can give you some more information around what that means. So obviously we're not alcohol free because we're selling um, and we have some junior members. And I click create. And then we're in. So it's a pretty easy process. Um, has anyone had a go at doing that? No? We've got um, somebody that's just said that it was easy, Russ. Mm. Fantastic. Really good. Um, Great. Okay, so we're, we'll be um, making sure, one of, one of the things that I do um, is I'll, I'll be checking this morning, uh, in the morning and I'll make sure that we get a staff member um, uh, aligned to your club and then we'll get them to reach out to you in the next few days just to see how you're going um, and if there's any help that you need along the way. Um, but from here, you can start a tour and it just takes you through what I mentioned earlier that you, you have your questionnaire and this is where you start. You work your way through and, and answer those questions. Um, you then get uh, uh, some action plan or action items generated depending on, on how you've answered the questions and that directs you as to what's your next step in, in progressing with good sports and what support we provide you uh, to help. Um, then after that, you actually can generate a policy and it's as simple as that. So I'm, I'm actually gonna take you through a couple of quick questions. So um, this is the dashboard that you're seeing here at the moment, but you can jump through to each of those particular uh, links at, uh, at the top here. You've got the questionnaire, the action plan, you can go to your policy, and then you've got things up here, which is a link to the resources, which goes back to the Good Sports website. Um, about and explore. So there's lots of things there that um, will support you. All right, so here's a couple of quick questions. Welcome to your questionnaire. Do you, do you follow all the legal requirements for your license or exemption? So liquor license, uh, which is your requirement to sell alcohol in New South Wales. Um, I'm gonna say, for that question, I'm gonna say yes. Okay, so that, that one there will, will then create a line item to go into my policy to say that we're abiding by all of the legal requirements for, for alcohol, uh, for the sale of alcohol. And then does your club display all the alcohol related signs that you are required to by law? And I'll say not yet. So that's something for us to work towards. So that goes on to our, uh, into our action plan. So if, you, if we look at here now, just from the answering of those two questions, I've got one that's gone into my policy and one that's gone in as an action item. And then you build those up 
and then you get to work your way to the end and then you go through your action items and that that can help you progress through through the uh, through the program. Russ, um, yes. the the information um, pod just there. Why is this important? Good pick up there, Riley. So if, if you it actually takes you through and explains why it's relevant, why it's important to you and your club, um, and that we've got the same there for every individual question. Um, which is just walks you through the, um, the various details. You can, if, you, if you're not sure, you can also log out at any time. You can come back in and finish it and you can skip a question as well. So if you're not sure and you need to go to another club member to get an answer, you just click skip and then you, you um, go through to the next one. So I'll skip that one. Okay. Now, if I go over to the action item, It'll bring up the action plan. Okay, and this one here is a high impact item. So what that means is that that's going to have a stronger impact on reducing alcohol related harms than, than uh, a number of other ones, because it's quite a, a really important one there um, linked to alcohol, um, liquor licensing, etc. So if you click on that little arrow, it takes you through to some of the, the information there. And for example, a guide to liquor licensing laws in New South Wales. So you can see that it, there's all of these resources in a really simple uh, approach that can take you through to everything that you need. I'm really conscious of the time. Um, I'm going to wrap up on that. Um, is there any questions? Uh, I did have one, Russell, it might be a bit technical, but it, might have, it was a while ago that I did it myself, but is there a way to actually change your questions in the questionnaire if, if anything's um, changed or? Uh, there is. We need to work on that through the back end. Okay. So um, that had just been getting in touch with uh, your good sports rep and we'll look into to the what needs to be changed. So, just shoot us through an email or give us a call and let us know exactly what needs changing. Then we'll go through the process with our IT team and everything just to update it all for you and um, set it up as you need it. Okay, no worries. Just all right, did, any, did anyone have any questions for, for Russell and Riley before they leave? No, thank you for the presentation. All good. Fantastic. Thanks so much. I'm looking forward to seeing those people that, that have said that it was really easy to jump in. I'll, I'll be really excited to, to have a look. I've seen an email come through now to say one club's come on in, which is brilliant. So anything we can do to help, just reach out. Um, so I'll, I'll shoot through the presentation as well uh, in a PDF so that you have it all um, you, and you can share it with the remaining clubs. Uh, I know we've recorded it tonight as well. Um, please pass that on and you can reach out to myself, uh, Riley, Andrew, or any of our other, our other team members who, um, who we might link you up with as well. So, awesome. If you don't have any other questions, thanks very much. Yep. No, I think everyone's pretty happy yeah. with that. So yeah, thank you very much, Russell, Riley and Andrew. And um, yeah, thanks everyone for joining us tonight. Have a good one. Thanks thank you very much, you everyone. Well. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thanks, Randy. Thanks, everyone. Thanks and, well, thanks and welcome to Good Sports, everyone. That's great. Thank you.